Houston from the Nelson. She's going to be talking today about um, Egyptian art, and we're going to be doing a, a presentation PowerPoint. You have a flyer there. Uh, our technology we're using today was provided through a matching grant from Canada's Creative Arts Industries Commission. So we're very thankful for that. And she will be uh, talking about hieroglyphics and Egyptian art. So again, welcome. Welcome. Thank you for taking the time out to come here to the gallery. Welcome. Thank you for taking the time out to come here to the gallery. And here is our guest speaker. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, let me get off for a little while. And again, my name is Sherry Nicholas, and now in my retired life, I am a docent at the Nelson Art Gallery. But before that, I was a sixth grade teacher in the Olathe School District. And the social studies um, curriculum is the ancient world, and one of my favorite civilizations. And uh, there is no known word in Egyptian for art. Uh, artists did not sign their works. Uh, and they were anonymous. And you're going to understand that a little better in a few minutes. And But art, as we know it, uh, what we consider it, it served a purpose. It wasn't, nothing was created just to enjoy. Everything had a purpose and a meaning. Okay. And ancient Egypt lasted from about 3150 BCE to 30 BCE, and they divided Egypt basically into two parts. There were two kingdoms. There is the Upper Nile, which is in the south, and there's the Lower Nile, which is in the north, and that's because the Nile runs south to north, <laughs> south to north. <laughs> and so, uh, one of the great things about ancient Egypt, and still today probably, it was a very protected area because it had deserts on the east and the west. Uh, the north, of course, it had the Mediterranean Sea. And the south, it had the cataracts on the Nile. And that made it pretty tough for invading forces to come. So they would have long stretches of peace, which they were able to do a lot of creating and, and uh, long periods where they could get a lot done. Not like some areas, uh, like uh, Mesopotamia, somebody new took it over about every other month. All right, now ancient Egyptian sculpture. Uh, during the period, during this ancient period, Egyptian art hardly changed. Uh, using the beliefs of religion and death, it was distinctive and it was ordered. There were strict rules that were followed and art was produced by royal workshops. During a pharaoh's reign, there was no place for originality or creativity. So most of the art created was to help the deceased reach the afterlife and was found inside the tomb. So it's not accessible to the general public. Today though, what we understand of ancient Egyptian culture is largely derived from these very private artifacts. Uh, the sculptured items um, had strict norms. The buildings, the animals, heads, limbs were always portrayed from the side, torsos and eyes from the front. So they have kind of an awkward look to them, if you notice. Yeah. So all faces looked straight ahead and the bodies were straight while size indicated a person's status in life. So you might have a um, relief of the Pharaoh with his children or his family or maybe his assistant. All right, so terminology, dynasty is a ruling family. Kingdoms were periods of stability and something I really had never heard anything about till I took some classes um, at, uh, during COVID uh, online, uh, there were intermediate periods. And during those periods, local rulers would take over and they would have civil wars. There were no strong pharaohs. And so actually there became some creativity in their art during those times. Now, is everybody familiar with BCE 
and CE. Well, it's not AD <laughs> and BC anymore. Politically correct. It is now BCE, and I do have a slide in a minute that'll explain that. Kingdoms. Uh, there were three main kingdoms. These were times of stability and centralized power. The old kingdom is known for the development of the pyramids and uh, the pyramids at Giza. Uh, royal power, noble class, and pyramids had texts. Um, the Middle Kingdom, again, political stability, flowering of literature. And the New Kingdom, the Golden Age, uh, was there was wealth, military might, and that was the very height of ancient Egypt. Okay. Here's an explanation about BCE. Before the Common Era, that's the year zero. Um, and then older time was greater. You know, it's the same concept. It's just a little different name. Well, we'll talk about, I'm just going to talk about it. It's the intermediate period. I don't know where it is, but it's, it, it's, it oh, okay. Oh, that's the decentralized power and civil wars. And they actually formally called it the dark ages. Uh, and the first um, intermediate period, decentralization of art. The pharaohs no longer had these uh, factories basically where everything was the same. People could actually have a little bit of creativity. The second intermediate period was when, uh, and I probably mispronounce a lot of these things, high coast ruled uh, Egypt. And the third period of uh, that like this is when uh, the Theban priesthood and Nubian conquest and rule of Egypt. All right, this is the earliest uh, known art piece, and this is around 3000 BCE, has a black top, uh, and it's this red wear, and this was found, I pronounce it Abydos, I'm not sure that's what everybody says, but you could actually, if you ever at the British Museum, you can find it there, and it's very beautiful, it's got that glaze, um, actually, I don't know why they didn't continue with that style, but they didn't, okay, ah, this is uh, the earliest dynasty. You can see the years. This is a stele of Dejet, the fourth pharaoh of the first dynasty. And his name means Horus Cobra. And so you're gonna make this cartouche today with Ruth, not me, <laughs> because I'm not artistic. But this is the forerunner of a cartouche. You see the box here. I was going to look up. I for, have forgotten. But this is, and this is the king's name. This is Horus. And I've got other pictures where we'll talk about Horus some more. And then this is the cobra. And so there's his name right there. And it, even though it's not the twisted rope um, that you're going to make on your cartouches, it, it is very similar. 